Hey everybody, my name is Fabrizio Ayala and thanks for popping in to Creating H.A. Tuber. I'm the writer, artist, creator of a comic book coming out uh, pre-orders in September from Alternative Comics. Today I'm going to be inking a new drawing, so if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Thanks for popping in. Hey Rev and Sabre, thanks for thanks for uh, coming in. So today, <clears throat> this is the drawing I'm going to be doing. So it's a uh, I was thinking sort of a Egyptian style, you know, environment. You know, so we have these pyramids in the back, and they're sort of belching smoke. I'm calling it like the burial machine, and this will be a story eventually, but. I like doing these preliminary drawings that kind of are evocative of, of what potentially what's going on, so. And let's see, today I'm also inking with uh, Windsor Newton, number two, series seven, sort of the traditional. It's basically what I use 99% of the time. Uh, sketch cards, I use microns, and then for inks, I'm doing the Dr. P.H. Martin's Black Star ink. And when I do use whiteout, I do have like a, a super opaque um, acrylic paint, but that's at the very, very end when I absolutely need it. <clears throat> hey, North Free, how's it going? Yeah, so we got a new drawing, and then I, what I did was I scanned this in, obviously tweaked the contrast a little bit, and I scaled it up a little bit, so it fits a full 11 by 17. And uh, so this will be on blue line, and I'll scan this in. This is on a, an Eon board, it's like a 100 pound, like a smooth board, so. There is nothing quite the, like starting a brand new drawing with inks it is it's very satisfying so Saturday afternoon pretty chill um, I also kind of bounce around a lot so if I'm off screen just kind of kind of shout but you know there are certain parts of the drawing that I like to just jump into right away and usually that's Horace because, you know, he's obviously going to be the focus most of the time, so I want to make sure I get him nailed down, at least to a certain degree. It's going to, def it's going to be a story. Again, I don't know if these are just going to be posters connected to a story or a cover, um, but this really, when I was drawing it, I'm like, I was thinking more of like a cover specifically. Um, I don't know what issue, that kind of stuff is down the road, but... Yeah, all of these all of these drawings that I'm doing will definitely have stories and issues associated with them eventually. You know, it when we get there, I'm not I'm not I can't predict when that will be, but they they go into a pile and they're definitely going to be used at some point. Cuz if I'm if I'm doing it on a live stream or something like that, it means it's one that I really like and you know, for this one, it's it just kind of screams story. We sort of have this Egyptian mage or whatever, and Horus is, is being attacked by, you know, some undead or strange, like, uh, uh, roots or things coming out at him. And we have the pyramids belching steam, so this is definitely going to be used. And I have been going through all of my old inking videos, which you may or may not have noticed. Um, I have something like 200 of them <clears throat> from most pages of the comic book, because I, I try to record everything I do as far as inking, and I'm you know slowly going to be putting those up on the channel. I do like to speed those up a little bit at least, just because 
I don't know if people want to watch me ink in real time all the time. So that way, if you want to see a, a sped up version, you can. If not, you can catch a live stream and see how slow I really am in life. <laughs> Also working on an After Effects trailer, which is turning out pretty nice, which I'm, I'm pretty excited about. It's always nice when you can take just a still image, put some music to it, you know, a little bit of animation, and you get you just get something completely different. So hope they'll have that out before the first issue. No matter what happens, I know that I can always, I can always do his pouches properly because <laughs> they're pretty easy to draw. But whatever happens, uh, whatever else happens in the drawing, I can always do the pouches pretty well. Now some of this drawing, I kind of left a little loose. So, you know, down here by his foot, um, there's definitely some, some gaps that I left for whenever I'm inking. I can sort of, kind of whatever I'm feeling at the time, I can, I can ink that. So, you know, if, if I go into this, like, wizard's clothing and I'm like, oh, I kind of like this new texture I'm doing or I like this pattern or something, and that kind of gives me a little freedom to incorporate that in other places that I that I didn't in the pencils. Yeah, so uh, pre-orders are going to be starting in the fall campaign for Alterna, which is going to be in September. So that will be the official. So I'll be, you know, sending out links, and I'm sure you'll see it on social media, but I'll remind everybody. Yeah, so that's exciting. I mean, it, it, it seems like it's been a while, but it's, the time has flown, and, you know, I've tried to prepare as much as possible you know, I have a website up and I have, you know, the e-commerce and newsletters. So getting all that stuff in place is really, it's been nice because it feels like I, I have the foundations and then I can just focus on, you know, doing cool marketing stuff like this or covers that are going to be down the, down the road. Hey, Matthew, <laughs> uh, I could do a sketch cover. My hand would would hurt so I have to I have to really parse those out plan those out a little a little bit um, but they are fun to do I really like them they've actually informed some of my comic book art as well so you know we're used to doing big drawings and when you're doing a small panel sometimes it's challenging but forcing myself to do those sketch covers and those really small drawings for the sketch cards has really helped me do small panels and whenever you need those small panels it's really important that you know you can really convey what you need to in that tiny little space so I have a couple of pages in issue three that I've done um, you know I have a couple of pages one's 12 panels one's I think eight or nine now that's not all the time but there are parts of the story where you have 
like really dense storytelling to do and those small panels are really important so doing the sketch cards and it's really helped that a lot and I probably wouldn't have done that on my own just because you know it's not it's not a size that you just kind of go to you just usually you know 11 by 17 or something like that but that's that's been nice Yeah, this paper is really nice. It just glides. Hey, Nate, how's it going? I love these first few lines. Are you ever tempted to just leave things less than finished? <sighs> yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I think it depends. You know, whenever, whenever I'm doing a drawing, there are things that need to be detailed and focused and, and clear for the storytelling, but you know, when it comes to this guy's leg over here and his foot, I don't know if that's really important um, as far as the storytelling. And it also, it kind of is a shorthand for motion in, in a way, right? You know, if something is a little blurry, if something is a little, you know, unfinished, you're kinda, your eye kind of thinks that might be motion as well. I, know that, I don't know if that's cheating or not, but so that's how I look at it. Um, this is also sort of, I don't know if this is common sort of comic book uh, philosophy or not, but I, for, this, for that kind of stuff, I'm thinking more like traditional painting. You got to keep those <laughs> sketch cards for it too. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know. I mean, the Alterna crew is just... It's insane. Um, I mean, it's really inspiring too. And the thing I love about it is everybody's style is so different, but so good in their in their own style. So it, it, it never feels like competition. It's just, it's inspiration. When I see another artist doing something amazing, I'm like, oh man, that's so great. Um, not that how can I incorporate it, but you know, using my style and you know, my environment, what sort of things can I use? So the last drawing that I did on the stream was that uh, H and the, the, the keyhole idol. I think that ended up taking four streams in total, which was actually quite a bit longer than I would have spent on a piece like that. So I'm going to try to keep these to maybe three episodes at an hour a pop. That's the goal, at least. I don't want to spend too much time on them because I, I, there's definitely the fear of overworking, no doubt. You know, um, I don't think I overworked those, but sometimes you just you got to keep an eye on the clock and say, okay, I'm just I'm just noodling for noodling's sake instead of actually describing form, texture, value. So, but what I'll probably do is um, on these streams, I'll just be doing you know this one drawing. That way I can combine them all into a longer video for people to watch and they can get, you know, the detail. And then I'll have other streams with other people that I'm, using, that I'm doing other work on. So it'll be nice to see this drawing from start to finish, you know, combined together in four. So this is kind of where I feel like, okay, Horus, the form is down. I'm kind of liking how everything's working. And also this is just to make sure that the drawing 
really worked. You know, sometimes you draw it, you set it down, you come back to it, and when you start inking it, I'm like, whoa, that, that part doesn't work, or that part doesn't work. So I'm at that stage where I'm like, okay, you know what, I think he works, I have enough of him, and then I'm gonna jump over to another character. Yeah, North North Free brought bought the uh, the Keyhole Idol at the last Alterna auction. It was it's it's a nice drawing. I mean, I I spent a lot of time on that, and I'm very thankful that you bought it though. I mean, it's it's really incredible. Yeah, and I I'm excited to make that into a poster, potentially a cover, you know, or something like that. Uh, get that colored. I'll definitely send you. You know, the, the first print of that poster, North Free, though. Because that'll be pretty cool. Okay, so now I'm going to jump to this guy. And just get enough of him done where I feel like, you know... Essentially, it's just, it's just getting the edges to the point where I feel like, okay, I can, I can finish him. I kind of see the character. I see the, the fabric that he's wearing and I know what I'm going to do essentially. You know what? Uh, I hadn't considered that North Free about coloring live. Hmm. I, I just for some reason never I considered that. So I color digitally. Um, I have a Cintiq, but I could I could definitely stream that. That might be pretty interesting. That way, again, people could see everything. You know, from start to finish. Yeah, I'll see if a setup works for that. That might be pretty interesting. Thanks for the idea. <laughs> I, assuming people want to see that, uh, I do, you know, I have that limited color palette that I use, um, but it would be, it would be kind of fun to stream that. Yeah, um, it's it's definitely that vibe. Um, I, I will say this: anytime you see somebody with their hands in this position right here, it's never a good thing. There's there's no way that you can have your hand in that and be. You're not going to see that at a parade or some sort of birthday party. It's always going to be it's always going to be a bad sign if you see somebody with their hands up like this. Um, as far as inspiration. You know, I like to start with one thing and then kind of twist it or tweak it. Um, so originally it really was just, okay, it's sort of Egyptian, Egyptian feel, and then kind of take it in a different direction. Because um, I don't want, I want things to be recognizable to some degree, you know? Because if not, things get too alien and too foreign and it's, it almost seems like it's random. So. For a lot of the things in, in the in the comic book, it's just it's gonna have a flavor of something, you know, either set in the real world or or some archetype or something like that, with a little bit of a twist. 
Um, but yeah, I could totally see this guy in like a in like Conan or something, you know. Which I haven't watched those movies in a long time, but super influential to me as a kid, and sort of just like the aesthetics. And I, I also like the idea of the contrast between Horace, mechanical, wearing a suit, you know, with pouches, and then this very not New York City, you know, villain. I just, I, I think that's really, I just love that idea. And I, I'm, I'm gonna, I plan on doing that a lot, you know. Yeah, so first traditional sort of Egyptian, and then I kind of like tweak it a little bit. The same with the, the pyramids. So I have these pyramids. I'm like, okay, those are pretty cool. What if they're belching smoke? You know, so how can I take something and then twist it? So, you know, we have a hole here with tubes coming out of it. So obviously this isn't sort of the, the Egyptian stuff that we would expect. Now as far as why, I have some ideas on stories. I, I and mean, this is going to be pretty far in the future, so I don't want to... I don't want to say too much, you know, but the idea is that we start somewhere we know and then things get, things get a little twisted. I'm actually staying pretty loose. But there's a nice thing about blue line is, you know, in theory, if I do mess this up, I could print out another blue line and start over. But that rarely happens uh, now. I, I really stick with something because I feel like I can make it work. And not with like white out, just overall. So even if I don't like a part, for example, or maybe there's a line that I didn't like, you know, that's a, that's a small part of the piece. After it's completely done, then you can look at it and decide, okay, was this a success or a failure? But I, I try not to judge things as I go, because if not, it, you get overwhelmed with making sure that every single stroke looks perfect. And you can't really, nobody can adhere to that sort of sort of uh, standards. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. I can't adhere to that kind of standards. But ultimately, it's, like I said, it's, it's the end product that's important. Okay, so I noodled on this guy a little bit. I'm gonna stay with him a little bit just so I I have to carve out these, some of this clothing a little bit, just so I know when I come back to it, I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm not, I'm not struggling to find things. Egyptians are a great culture to use. Love, apocalypse, and strappings. Yeah. <laughs> Mamra, yep. We're definitely going to see more Egyptian-themed stuff with Horus. Um, I, yeah. I'll leave it at that. I don't want to spoil too much, but it's, it's the imagery and the culture is definitely going to pop up in some interesting ways, you know. I'm not going to lie, Mamra is one of the best design characters ever. This is so perfect. To me, you can really tell a, a good character design, you know, whether it's from the 80s or whatever, is if, if all you need to sort of bring it back to life 
is just to do another version of it that's slightly different, you know. Um, I just saw, I think it was a Skeletor. Some of those characters, you would just tweak them a little bit and kind of update them. And I don't mean redo them in like a modern way. I just mean take the spirit of the original character and then just just get it, add a little more detail than that original cartoon or, you know, flesh out a little bit of the clothing that wasn't. That's when you know what a character's good. Or if he has a vacuum cleaner on his head. Those are the two ways that you can really tell. Just kidding. Another reason, you know, this is one of those sort of artistic reasons. You want to draw, there's certain things that you want to draw, and you don't want to tailor your story always to that because then you'll sort of get, you'll get stuck and you won't stretch. Um, I want to draw more anatomy. I love anatomy. It's sort of my, like if I had my druthers, I would be, I would be doing anatomy all the time. But as you can see, Horace, <laughs> there's not much human anatomy. I mean, underlying is close, sure, but, you know, I would love to do a, a Conan comic book. That would be my, my ultimate, where I can just do anatomy all day long. So, he was sort of an excuse also to, to be able to do anatomy. Alright, so I think I have enough of him sort of carved out. You know, from a distance, he's looking pretty good. Horse is looking pretty good. So now I'll probably start carving out you know some of these secondary items and I'm just gonna hand I'm gonna go for this tube because this is just gonna be a fun tube to do because I'm not imagining this being extraordinarily like uh, manufactured this is I was thinking almost like leather over like pieces of bone or metal segments. So it's it's very it's it's not very uh, not accurate, but uh, technical or industrial. It's it's kind of haphazardly created. And and each little piece of this drawing, I'm really. You know, I'm, I'm carving out <clears throat> the story as well. So, it, you know, as I as I ink it and I add textures, you know, if that texture exists in that world, okay, well, that implies something about this world, about this universe, you know, about these characters. So something as small as, you know, what is that tube made out of can really inform, you know, the story or... Or what happens next? So these hands were pretty loose, but they're nice. Um, these are fun to do. Because <clears throat> I'm assuming it's kind of like undead. Obviously, they're coming from the ground. So you can be a little, you can be a lot more loose with them than you would normally but they still have to have the underlying structure though so that that can't change I like the idea of like weeds or roots coming out of the middle of the desert too um, underground so I thought that was an interesting idea Let's see, will Hoover's face ever be revealed or we keep the gimmick mystery? I don't plan on ever revealing it, but that doesn't mean it won't it won't be part of the story. So it's not like he wears this helmet, but we don't even mention it. So it does come up and there are gonna be times where it, it becomes an issue. But as of right now, I don't plan on actually showing his face. Uh, but I'm, I'm also, I'm not thinking 20 issues ahead, you know. Um, I'm thinking more like 5 or 10 issues. So I don't, I don't want to say never. If, if it's appropriate to the story, if it really, if it works, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it as a gimmick. 
you know, it's it's part of the story or it's not, but I don't want to do it as a, you know, well, if he shows his face, then the jig is up and, you know, nobody likes the, the character anymore. Hey, Midnight Muslim, thanks for, thanks for popping in. Appreciate it. trying to think of I mean there's I'm sure there's other characters where like that sort of gimmick I don't know I feel like <clears throat> that might might do more harm than good if it's not a real if it's not really tied or integrated into the character uh, like Horus I mean it's it's definitely like I said there's going to be stories about it and it's it's going to be it's going to be an issue you know but I just I don't know one way or the other if we're going to see it just yet So, yeah, I just, you know, then I popped over to the glove a little bit and put a little more detail there. So I really just kind of jump around and slowly get the whole thing going. Now, the only thing that I do leave towards the end is more of the background stuff, mostly because of this background. It's not terribly complex. You know, it's a pyramid. Um, I already have all the ruled lines and the perspective down. So the most challenging thing would be the, the clouds. So I will leave that towards the end for sure. What about multiverses? Does Hoover's worm travel through dimensions? Uh, it's, he doesn't really travel. I mean, he can travel through different things. It's not multiverses though, right? It's, it's pocket dimensions is, is really the idea. Um, and the thing is for him, he, as far as he's concerned, these are just normal places. So if he goes into a bagel shop, um, he just he sees i don't know a, a shark with like wings or something but to him that's the bagel shop so whenever he asks somebody he's like hey have you been to the bagel shop shop on 23rd and i don't know lexington or something uh that like he doesn't realize that that's a pocket universe he can just that's where things are for him so as far as how he travels you know that is going to kind of be revealed with his origins, um, but it's definitely not multiverses. I'm, I'm, I'm staying away from that concept. I'm doing sand is going to be going to be a little tricky because I'm going to have to really feather everything. If not, it won't it definitely won't look like sand. So now I think I might jump to the background a little bit. A 
You don't want to make sure I don't go too heavy with lines because you just don't want your eye to go back here all the time. But I just want to make sure it's descriptive. If people do want to sort of linger on the background, there is enough, there's enough line work and, and artwork to describe what needs to be, but we just don't want your eye immediately to go back there. Did you ever do a pocket dimension map or globe, however they're arranged in relation to each other? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Horace actually has an updated New York map that he essentially changes. Because to him, it's like, hey, this, this map is wrong. This isn't there. The, the plateau of Lang is over here, not, uh, you know, not a park. So I will do a map. Um, it would be pretty interesting. I think it would be in, in the voice, of course. So he would be writing. So I would basically take a, a map of New York City and fix it. <laughs> so, you know, Horace would be writing notes, you know, on where things are. So definitely would love to do something like that. Um, also, if, if I do something like that, it should be related to a story somehow. So... Maybe I create a map and these little notes that Horace is writing kind of give you, maybe there's a little clues in there or a mystery in the map itself that gets solved in a comic book or something like that. So I want to make sure whatever I do gets, gets tied narratively to the rest of the, the story in the world. I, he does have a globe as well, but I don't know how I would do the globe. <laughs> that would be, logistically speaking, I just, I'm not sure how I would do that. It would be cool. I could 3D model it maybe, um, but I couldn't, you know, make it for people to have. You know, now that I'm doing these pyramids, I'm thinking, well, technically, you know, I could go to Egypt as a business expense, right? I mean, to, to draw pyramids, I mean, they can't, they can't argue that, right? <laughs> a kid. But admittedly, I do go places for reference like that all the time. I'm constantly going to New England, whether it's Rhode Island or someplace in Massachusetts, um, just for the architecture. And even though that might not be like Horace's home, he's in New York City, he's going to be, he'll be going to lots of places. And I do love certain periods of time for architecture, so... We haven't seen any supporting characters yet, have we? Just villains, are there? Yes, so Horace has essentially two friends, or I call them like the gang. There's Slurp and Max. So they travel with him on occasion, depending on if he needs him, but he, you know, they help him go. They help him. You know, if he's on a case and he needs Max and Slurp, he'll take him with him. And Max is sort of a. He's a, he's a native of New York, kind of like a short squat guy. And I kind of see him as an ex-bookie, you know, but he's, he's straightened out. Um, and then there's Slurp, who is, you know, he... I like to think of him as like a cross between a golden retriever and Nosferatu, because um, I really wanted to draw Nosferatu. But personality-wise, uh, he's more like a golden retriever. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's because to me Nosferatu is also equally hilarious and terrifying. Yeah, exactly. I thought Sorpa was a villain. Yeah, you'll you'll see whenever the first issue comes out. He's he's definitely not a villain, but he can be equally terrifying and funny. I think um, in certain situations, if it calls for it. So 
I think you'll like him. He's he's an interesting character for sure. Yeah, and Max, um, like I said, he's a very like short, squat New Yorker, early, you know, not turn of the century, but uh, 1920s, 30s New Yorker. So he's got a style, aesthetic that that I've always liked. He wears a vest. Um, he's kind of like a no nonsense guy, which with him and Horace and Slurp, it, it's. It really makes a good combination of all three of them. I think my brush might be getting a little gunky. So I think I'm good on the, the pyramid background. It's looking, it's good enough to, for me to, to kind of go one level deeper. So I would do sort of the cracks in the bricks, some chipping, you know, some just overall texture next time. So I will probably jump to the one back here. Now this is obviously more in the background. So I'm gonna try to keep the lines lighter and not as much detail. The clouds, clouds can definitely get difficult, can be difficult, you know, um, depending on how you do them, you could, we'll see about that, <laughs> we'll see about that. I'm, I'm kind of waiting to sort of plan how I'm going to attack that exactly. Another one of those hands that uh, if anybody is in this position, it's never a good thing. Nobody's ever saying, hey, can you pass me the remote? And they're making this shape with their hand. I actually wonder if this hand shape started in comics and now people use it or somebody saw something do it because outside of comics, it's, a, it's such a unique, I don't know, it's such a unique thing to me. It's the villain hand. All right, what do I want to do next here? Slowly I'll do some outline of this, and I'll make sure I break up the line a lot. That way, it doesn't look like just a shape in the back that I'm outlining. These, the ones in really far distance, I will I'll probably just do grayscale patching like I did like I did the pencil there. So that's when that really comes in handy, you know, if you're doing it tight or loose. It's also to inf to remind yourself like how do you want to handle this when you ink it. You know, a lot of people will do uh, Essentially, they'll do an area and they'll put an X where they want it black, but to me that's difficult because when I'm drawing it, I want to see, you know, what's going to be next to something else. And if I need to go black behind it, you know, how far am I going to push it? Is it a grayscale? Is it hatching? So I, that's not something I do. I see a lot of people do that, though. I feel like I've seen that hand pose on 50s monster movie posters. Yeah, villain hands. You, you've seen that makes me think about how expressive Nosferatu is with his hands. Yeah, I didn't know that as far as the movie, the monster posters. I guess you're right. Yeah, I can see that. It's sort of like classic movie monsters. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. That's why, like, Nosferatu's hands being so expressive. When I designed Slurp, 
ultimately he's just a head and hands because he's wearing a big robe and he has a big collar. And that's what I wanted. I'm like, okay, head and hands. And his hands are always near his face, you know, so that's why you get these really great, these great poses where his hands are right next to his face. I love it. So yeah, I'm, I'm not ashamed of, of the influence that, you know, Nosferatu is on Slurp. Although Slurp is definitely his own character now. But when I was starting, I'm like, I just really want to draw Nosferatu. <laughs> this guy a little bit. And I think I'll definitely have to texture this like rag in the back with like a hatching, you know, like a, a weave of some, stuff, some sort, just to really bring that home and to differentiate it from everything else. And that'll take a long time, but I think that'll work. Something like that. Uh, super scientist, detective alone, Batman, or does he have any superpowers? So, um, not superpowers in sort of the traditional sense, but he makes things and devices, and those devices can do extraordinary things. That's kind of where I'll leave it, um, because that that'll change. It it it's and it's not um, it's not merely like Batman making you know a grappling hook or something like that. These devices can be extraordinary, so it's almost like I mean his super his superpower, if you want to put it in those terms, is just making these things to let him do extraordinary things. I mean, if I wanted to use sort of a classic Marvel character, I don't want to say Forge or somebody like that from the X-Men because he was just making just normal guns and things like that. So, yeah, I can't think of anybody really to compare him to. Thanks, Nate. Appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Classic pose, similar to the old Marvel team up three. Sp yes, yeah. I was just, I was, I've been boarding and backing some of issues, some old issues that I just haven't looked at in forever. And there was a bunch of Marvel team ups, and I'm, I, I loved them so much. Alrighty. So another thing that's always a challenge that I really have to concentrate on is his hose. I'm getting these, the direction of these lines because they're in perspective. So I have to make sure that I turn the form really well. So I usually leave this after, you know, after I've warmed up a bit so I can, I can hit it just right. A lot of times this is covered up in pure black. Um, shoot. Yep. But the underlying structure is, is really important. I would say I have to white that out, but I don't because that'll be black. So. I don't know the Witching Hour anthology. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm I'm a Bronze Age complete nut. Like that is that's my time period. I I make no bones about it. <laughs> Hoover's hose is possibly a Kryptonite vulnerable. Um. Mm, 
no, I'll just I'll just say that. Um, Cause I, there's a lot of stuff I don't want to spoil, but something like that, I have no problem. Sort of, it's it's not his vulnerable vulnerability. Thank you. I really appreciate that midnight mausoleum. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I am a like I said, I'm a bronze age nut job, so I think. I mean, I don't know what my style looks like, but i that's who I go to a lot, you know, Buscema and just anybody from the Bronze Age. Cursed Cabbage. How's it going, buddy? Thanks for dropping in. Got a few more minutes and then I'm done, but... Yeah, so I'll just go over it. So this is where I'm at so far. Uh, got a new drawing, 11 by 17 on blue line. And I'm just doing... Just doing the outlining for the most part now. So I go through and I outline everything, put a little bit of texture, but that lets me know how things are going. Then I'll go in, I'll do the blacks, and then the last thing I'll do is the actual textures of everything. So I'm hoping maybe two live streams, now eh, probably three live streams to do this whole thing. Yeah, John Buscema, I have his, um, one of his art books where it's really just like sketches and it's his gestures. He was like, he was a, a legit artist. Um, not, not to put anything like comic book arts down, but if you look at his, like his ability, his artistic ability outside of comics, it's really, really incredible stuff. All right, so I'm gonna work on I'm gonna work on some of these uh, roots coming out of the ground in the middle of the desert. That's weird, right? So I gotta just, I gotta hit the edges of these roots to give them form because there's, there's not much that you can do besides that. And this is actually one of the big benefits of of a uh, of a brush. I can really hit the thick and thin lines really quickly. If I was using a pen or something like this, it would just take a lot longer, and it would be it would just be a little more stiff, you know. So there are certain scenarios where having a brush is just a huge advantage. Uh. You know, I think I haven't completely decided if I'm doing a regular day just yet. It's either going to be Saturday or Sunday, and it might actually be both, you know, for an hour on Saturday, an hour on Sunday. Um, that might work out fine. You know, the weekdays, everybody else is streaming, so this might be a good opportunity for me just to grab an afternoon. I'll let everybody know, though, when, I'm, when I pick a day and stick to it. That way it's not just randomly... You're out eating lunch and you get a notification that I'm streaming. All right, so let's. <clears throat> so this sand is really going to be. It's going to be something special. <laughs> I knew I was getting into doing sand, but it's. It's going to be. It's going to be something. So I'm just going to do a little bit here and there, just so I know, just how I know how I'm going to texture it and work with it the next time I jump on. It's really just so I don't forget and I start doing something else.
question is what um, thank you thank you yeah I mean the YouTube channel is pretty new um, I do have as I was saying like something like 200 videos that I've banked of actual pages from the comic from the first two issues into the three into into the third issue so I'll be posting those you know once or twice a week in addition to sort of the live streaming I didn't want to put that stuff too early because then you would see literally every single page before you read the comic and that might be a bit of a spoiler but now's a good time now that the the pre-orders are going to be in September and with the live streaming I can stagger that And of course his random, not random, his, his outlet, flying free, or his plug, sorry, his plug, uh, flying free. I use this really, I use this a, a lot to show motion for horrors, like when he's turning his head, if he's getting hit or if he's hitting or something. Uh, it's really important to that, you know, because I, I don't have a face to show, so I have to show motion in a lot of ways that other people it's easy for them hey how's it going death curse thanks for popping in i'm heading out in a few minutes but oh the cards came in safe yes uh i did uh six cards for the uh, second chance campaign for uh for death curse the uh City of Rot and Camp Rambo, which are two fantastic books. If anybody has not read them, highly recommend it. Some of the, the most fun books I've read in a while. Um, the colors, the, the atmosphere is really just right up my alley. It's very different stuff than I do, which is fun because I don't, you know, I can't. I don't know it's just not it's not my style so it's really it's great to see and read books that are just completely different so highly recommend it yeah the sketch cards I did were really fun um, they're in I did watercolor and it was they turned out I think they turned out really nice uh, you know it's it's a challenge sometimes you don't quite know the paper or how it's gonna hold up so you just kinda you gotta play with it a little bit to see what you can or can't do I think we're about at an hour yeah for sure um it's funny i was i was telling somebody that you know i got back into comics and it's made me a fan again which it's not saying i wasn't a fan anymore but after i started drawing again and seeing all the great indie stuff out there it, it just made me a comic book fan again and i i forgot how much i missed it you know i would pick stuff up randomly and you know put it down <laughs> I'd jump in and out. I still had all my old comic books I would look at, but you know, old stuff is great, but I want I want new stuff too, you know. I want to be able to sit down and read something I've never read before that is just as good as something old that I loved. So it's been really it's been really nice. Yeah, films, uh, getting into films has got to be wild. I can't even, I can't even fathom. I've done, I've done a fair amount of things, you know, in the past 20 years. I've worked in, you know, software and advertising, 3D motion graphics, but that's all still relatively kind of aligned. It's, it's, there's a lot of overlap in all that stuff. So something that's completely outside my skill set, I'm, I'm always blown away by. 
and film is definitely one of them. All right, all right, looks like it's three o'clock. Um, yeah, so this is where I'm at. I'll just kind of recap. Got a pretty good base on sort of like outlining everything that I need to, like informing textures and like form. Um, main characters, got the backgrounds kind of in there a little bit, a little bit of shading, but not much. And this should be a good place to pick up next time where I can probably start doing some blacks and a little bit of texturing. So thanks everybody. I, I really appreciate people showing up, chatting. The, an hour goes by great and, uh, or an hour goes by fast when I'm, when I'm talking to everybody. So I'll catch you next time. And thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you, appreciate it. Have a good weekend, everybody.